Shalom. I truly hope all is well with you and that um, what I'm going to share today will not only be uh, empowering, but um, will enlighten you on some of the behaviors you have or the cause and effect of why you may lack self-control in highly volatile situations or conflict. Um, I've always uh, desired to make a video um, on this topic because so many men and younger men are um, mastered by their emotions in a moment when they should rule their emotions. And as a result of that, many men have lost their lives and their freedom because of actions that were, I would say, rooted in more so feeling than facts. And the inability that so many of us as men uh, have in regards to being able to process in real time the uh, end result of an action has become detrimental uh, to men of all ethnicity. So I want to take a moment to uh, share a lesson from one of my books, Battle Cry, Waging and Winning the War Within. But before I do, um, for those of you who um, like this channel and feel that the information here is needed, please click the subscribe button and click the notifications button as well so that you will be notified when I upload a new video. Um, I was motivated to um, share a video like this after receiving a call from a, a younger man that I mentor who is well respected and loved in the Detroit community. I mean, he take care uh, of his business. He's not foolish, very responsible young man, beautiful family. And um, but it was just this one moment, just like all of us as men, when we're disrespected, um, that doesn't go over too well. We It's hard for us just to let that slide. And I'm so thankful that this young man chose to reach out to me, um, although I, I, I don't. I doubt that he would have acted on what he was feeling, but he really needed a sounding board um, to really process what he was feeling. So I want to share with you what he was, the situation that he was in so that you can get context and then uh, basically frame out where I'm going with this lesson. He had called me uh, one evening, um, very upset because someone had taken a significant amount of money from his business. And uh, this brother is strong, can fight, military uh, background, uh, actually a sniper, actually. He's, he's not one to play with. Um, and he was ready to um, deal with this person in a way where uh, this person uh, will remember um, what he had done forever. And I gave him a moment to process what he was feeling so that I um, could hear out the entire story and hear the heart of the matter. And he was very, uh, he was justified in feeling the way he did. Um, but once he was able to flush out uh, his reasoning for wanting to hurt this individual, I asked him to look at the end result of it. So in other words, if you were able to choke this man out or hurt him severely, how would that be advantageous for you, your family and your career? And as a man uh, who's responsible as he is and wise for his age, he said it wouldn't be advantageous. I would actually jeopardize my business, possibly get charged with an assault and then possibly get sentenced to some jail time. Not too many of us at his age, I believe he's in his 30s, definitely, aren't great verbal processors. We can't process the emotions in real time because as men, we're taught only to be masculine. And when you look up the word masculine or masculinity, it's just few attributes that are traditionally ascribed to men, such as boldness, strength, aggression, etc. And if you're only used to expressing those emotions when you're in a heated moment, when you feel disrespected, 
you can only pull on those emotions to deal with that scenario. But if you become a comprehensive man, one who is not only courageous, but also compassionate, someone who's not just strong, but sensitive, a man who can be whatever the moment demands, he now can show restraint, self-control. He can process because he's used to dealing with other emotions besides the one uh, that we go to all the time as men, which is anger. Anger is just a surface emotion, but when you dig deep, there's other emotions that trigger that emotion. And so as we were talking, I had him process really the root cause of what he was feeling and gave him about two minutes. And he was able to say that he was hurt because he trusts this person and the person took advantage of his trust. And how many of us as men, anyone who takes advantage of your trust or a relationship with a woman who basically misuses your love or mistreats you because you're a kind gentleman. That hurt rarely is expressed in those situations, but anger is always what we allow people to see. So I encouraged him to really sit with the hurt. And then when he was able to process the hurt, he dug a little deeper. Then he felt, you know, embarrassed as well. You can understand why he wanted to take matters literally into his own hands. But I'm so proud of this young man because he hired a lawyer and he's going about it the right way that will keep him in an advantageous position. So I want to now discuss uh, lesson seven or chapter seven for my book, Battle Cry. And I'm going to put it up on the screen so that you can follow along. I talk about what's called combat communication. I learned this concept um, when I trained in martial arts. Um, actually, I think the art was uh, called Shaolin Kempo at the time. My instructor uh, was a Vietnam War vet, very serious gentleman. Um, so serious uh, with what he believed and even in his training that he was uh, known to shut down crack houses in the city of Detroit. And so his philosophy was very serious. He was a principle-based instructor, and he really believed in uh, ruling the emotions so that you can master them. So combat communication, what is it? Combat communication is the language that comes from the exchange of information during a fight between two combatants. The fighter who pays attention and mentally downloads the other's strengths, weaknesses, and tendencies will be equipped with the data needed to respond to his opponent's attack and put himself in the best position for victory. I have a good example of this because many of you still may not be able to follow along exactly what is combat communication. I believe this movie is called Blood and Bone and it's from uh, where the actor is Michael J. White. He's observing that the gentleman he's fighting is dropping his jab once he executes it. And that leaves the right side of his jaw open. And watch what Michael J. White does. Staying calm, boom. Knocks him out. This is what happens when you're able to maintain self-control, process in real time, and respond, not react, to a threat or an offense that keeps you in an advantageous position. I now want to show you what happens when we do not process in real time. Basically, when we allow our emotions to rule us in the wrong moment instead of processing our emotions and even thoughts in real time. I call it combat calamity. On Wednesday, September 18th, 2013, two men in Iona, Michigan died needlessly as a result of road rage. Nobody knows exactly what happened except that these two men pulled over in a parking lot and started arguing with each other before gunshots were heard. Both men had concealed carry licenses, and as the argument escalated, they drew their guns and shot each other. 
One man was 43, the other was 46. Both were pronounced dead at the scene. I want you to take a moment now and put yourself in this heart-wrenching scenario. Imagine thinking about your actions while lying in your own blood. What would you have done differently? Whose faces would you see? How would they be affected by your death? What memories would flash through your mind as you shed tears of regret and take your last breath? Would protecting your ego really have been worth it? Combat communication allows you to steal your soul, which is the seat of your emotions, so that you can maintain self-control in heated moments. It is written that a wise person foresees danger and takes precautions, but the simple goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. That's Proverbs 22, 3. So here's what I call the four L's of navigating conflict. Number one, listen. Listen to what someone is saying, not only their words, but their heart. Look. Look at the entire picture, body language, facial expression, and other cues. The next L, learn. Learn to discern the possible scenarios and outcomes. Learn to discern the possible scenarios and outcomes. As I mentioned earlier, when you process in real time, you not only need to consider the decision you're going to make for the moment, but also how that decision will affect the future. And the last L, leap. Leap towards the wisest course of action that maintains an advantageous position. I pray that this short lesson will prevent you from being mastered by your emotions in the moment so that you will become the man the moment demands. Shalom.